a society woman was given a dinner party for some very important friends of hers and the menu was to include steak and she wanted to have some really good mushrooms to go along with the steaks and she went down to some stores and she couldn't find any mushrooms that she wanted and somebody told her that there are mushrooms growing out behind the neighbor's barn so she went over there and gathered a large basket of the mushrooms you know that you shouldn't really do that unless you know what you're doing but she gathered a large basket of mushrooms took them home washed them cooked them up along with the steaks the lady knew that mushrooms could be poisonous so she fed a steak or a part of a steak and some of the mushrooms to her dog and she waited a while to see if anything would happen to the dog also not a good idea if you like your dog right so the dog seemed okay and so she served to the guests the mushrooms and the steaks half an hour later a servant rushed into the house and she exclaimed your dog is dead so the lady called the poison control number and ambulances came and uh, several ambulances because there were a lot of people there she, they pumped everybody's stomach and just then the servant came in and said they caught the hit and run driver that killed your dog <laughs> friend of mine told us that he was over in the house the other day and I said I'm gonna tell that one on Sunday morning so the class Ecclesiastes chapter 7 14 says this when times are good be happy but when times are bad consider this God has made the one as well as the other therefore no one can discover anything about their future would you bow your heads with me Dear Lord, we thank you for the truths in your word. Sometimes they seem strange to us, Lord, but they are always good. So we thank you for these truths and ask you to apply them to each life today in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we all have ups and downs in life. Ups and downs in this life. Sometimes we're happy, sometimes we're sad. Nobody escapes from that. Ups and downs. Bob was up. No, he's down. <laughs> But we all have ups and downs. Good things and bad things come our way. Easy and hard. Sometimes life is easy. Sometimes life is hard. The older you get, some, some of the things you could do before, well, they're too hard. I don't get up on tall ladders anymore. I, got, I painted the top of my house, big extension ladders. I'm not doing that again. Not any time, not ever. I'm not doing that again. I gave the ladders to my son. No thanks. There are things you can't do anymore. Health, illness, we have good times and bad times. Energy, fatigue, we all go through ups and downs. Amen? All of us go through ups and downs. The story of Zacchaeus in the Bible is a story that somebody can have ups and downs. If you don't know the story of Zacchaeus in the Bible, when you read that story, you can sort of wonder what kind of tree this was. It says he ran and got up in a sycamore fig tree, in the King James sycamine fig tree. And now we thought, what kind of tree is that? Because sycamore trees that we have don't have figs on them. And fig trees don't, you know what sycamore looks like? It always reminds me because the bark is that scaly bark. It's gray and white. looks like it's sick. <laughs> so that reminds me that's a sycamore tree. Beautiful wood inside of it. But the sycamore fig, Ficus sycamorus, is native, there really is such a tree, to the Middle East and parts of Africa. The name Sycamorus came from the Greek Syca Morris, which means mulberry fig. The leaves are similar in shape to mulberry leaves, and the fruit looks very similar to the common fig, except it is smaller. I always wondered what that tree really was because it says he ran and got up in a sycamore fig tree. And I thought, sycamore trees don't have figs, but this tree does, and it is a sycamore fig tree. So that was pretty interesting. But in Luke chapter 19, the story of, of 
Zacchaeus, Jesus was entering Jericho and was passing through. That's the first verse. Jesus had already healed a man that was blind. And people thronged and followed him everywhere that he went. He was getting to be like a rock star. He was getting famous. <coughs> a special favor among the common people because he moved and, and, and blessed them. So at this point, he was traveling around. People wanted to see this man who was able to heal the blind and the crippled. They wanted to see him. And his words were powerful. He was able to confound the teachers of the law who were supposed to be like college professors are today. The really intelligent ones that had all the knowledge. He was able to confound them with his words. They challenged him and he just said things that they didn't know how to answer. But he identified with the common people and those people loved him. Verse 2, a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and he was wealthy. He wasn't just any tax collector. He was a chief tax collector. How many of you, your favorite person is a tax collector? My sister was the most hated woman in Loudoun County, Virginia. She was a tax assessor for, on real estate. I'm just kidding. The people loved her. But, that, but she was a tax assessor in Loudoun County. And they reassess your property every year. And I don't think it ever goes down. Anyway, nobody really likes tax collectors. But he wasn't a, just an ordinary tax collector. He was a chief tax collector. And from his high position, he was able to enrich himself. He would take the tax and keep part of it. The tax was for the Romans. They were employed by Rome. But he would overtax the people, send the correct amount to the Roman authorities, and then he would keep the rest for himself. And he was a wealthy man because he was overtaxing his own people. So they got rich at the expense of their fellow citizens. The tax collectors were hated by their fellow citizens. They were hated. So Zach was despised by the other Jewish people. And this was in Jericho. He wanted to see who Jesus was in verse 3, but because he was so short, he could not see over the crowd. Have you ever been there? I've never had much stature. And if you go to a, to a parade and there's a bunch of tall people in front of you, you can't see who's coming. Down in front of my photo studio every year they would have a parade and it was my obligation to photograph for the for the high school the um, floats and the band and the cheerleaders and those things so I put a stepladder out there and got up on top of it because I knew there'd be tall people in front of me and I wouldn't be able to get the picture and I did that I stand, stood up on the ladder and I got my pictures but he wanted to see who Jesus was he had heard about Jesus but he could not see over the crowd because he was a diminutive person a short guy observe at this point Zach was down. I'm calling him Zach instead of Zacchaeus. Is that okay if I call him Zach? He was down. He was short of stature. He was lacking in esteem because his friends, well, his common people, despised him because he helped the Romans to rob them. And there was a big contention at this time because the Romans were cruel taskmasters. They were the crucifiers and they insisted by brutal force that people obey everything they wanted to do. He was helping them and, and he was down because he was despised. He was down because he was not able to see Jesus who he heard about. You know, a believer is always able to see Jesus. If we can always, we can see the hand of God in our good times as well as our bad times. So we're always able to see him whether we're up or whether we're down. We can always see him anyway. The only believer who cannot see that God is always there is the one who refuses to see God at work in his circumstances.
<laughs> if you can't see it, that's just going to get an amen. <laughs> I'm going to make a, a, a light here, this little sign, I push a button, it'll come on and say, can I get an amen? <laughs> but that's true. He's always there. Yes, amen. Jesus is always there. Our God is always there. He's there in the valley of the shadow of death. And he's there by the still waters. He's there in the hard and he's in the easy. He's there. So Zach is down at this point. Verse number four. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Zach was desperate to see Jesus. He thought um, that, you know, he was just curious to see the famous man who was coming by. That's what Zach thought. It was just, you know, I want to see who this guy is. But sinners are all desperate, and he was a sinner. Everybody that doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior is a sinner. Everybody. Sometimes that desperation begins in curiosity. The desperation to see Jesus begins with curiosity. And that's how it started with Zacchaeus. Can it be that curiosity about Jesus comes from the Holy Spirit? I think so. And we had music about the Holy Spirit today. Just wondering about Christ and who he is leads to a more intensive searching. Only those who refuse to come to Christ, who refuse to believe, don't find him. They're the only ones that don't find him if they refuse to believe. So at this point, Zach is up. He's up in a tree. He's up in his curiosity. He started down. He was despised. He was short. He couldn't see. And now he's up. He's up in a tree. He's up in curiosity. And that curiosity comes from God, comes from the Holy Spirit. Seek and ye shall find, the Bible says. So he was seeking. He didn't know what he was seeking. He didn't know what was going to happen. Verse 5, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up to him and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So from this elevated position, Jesus takes notice of him. All he wanted to do was see what Jesus looks like. But Jesus takes note of him and he knows who he is. He said, Zacchaeus, come down. He knows who we are. He knows who all of you are. He knows. So of all the people who are thronging around him, Jesus takes notice of the little guy in a tree. Zach got in the tree so he could see Jesus. He didn't get up there so Jesus would see him. That wasn't his idea. He got up there so he could see Jesus. Because he was a tax collector, he may have thought that, uh, that Jesus would despise him. He may have thought that. Some people think that they're not good enough to come to God. Some people think that. I know such a man. He thought that God couldn't forgive him because what he had done. But I was able to help him. I said, you can't do that. You can't decide who God forgives or what he forgives. The blood of Jesus was shed for every sin, including yours. And I was able to help him. And I baptized this man. He was an, and, he, and he's a close friend. But Jesus knows who his seekers are. He knows who the seekers are. The Holy Spirit does his part. He brings conviction. Repentance follows. Wonderful victory. The greatest victory, the greatest healing that you can ever have is the healing from the sickness of sin. So at this point, Zach is up. Not only up in a tree, but he's up in that he is noticed and spoken to by Jesus himself. Verse number six. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Jesus said, come down. He came down at once. Now, in order to come down immediately, it seems to me that Zach would have to jump down. 
the sycamore fig tree has low hanging branches it says but he had to get up high enough to see over the crowd and now he had to jump down he had a gravity assist when he landed he would have been at the feet of jesus and he would have been crouching because when you jump off of a tree limb you hit the ground and your knees collapse a little bit and you're crouching i used to do that i won't do that anymore but he would have been at Jesus' feet at this point. Jesus said, come down. So Zach came down in obedience. Jesus called him down, and he came down. He not only came down physically, but he came down spiritually. He became humble. He humbled himself before Jesus. This proud man, taxer of his neighbors, wealthy nice home nice clothes becomes humble in spirit humility is the kind of down that god can work with if you proud it's hard for the spirit to penetrate it's not impossible but when you come to him in humility god can work with that god can deal with you first peter 5 6 and 7 humble yourselves therefore under god's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time see humbling is a down thing god is the lifter verse 7 cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you most of us need to consider humility sometimes just when we think we have everything under control just when we're comforted with what we're doing God says something our way to see if we will submit to his sovereignty how many people had everything under control and then they got out of a job because of this nasty virus or they got sick or their grandparents died how many people in in, in pride and in you know I got everything I, I'm cool I got everything and all of a sudden this virus comes and you don't know where that came from we don't know where it came from we think we know but it just you couldn't stop it humble yourselves under god's mighty hand second corinthians 4 7 and 9 but we have this treasure in jars of clay that's us we're a jar of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from god and not from us we are hard pressed on every side but not crushed perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed there are low things there are negative things and positive opposite things in all of life we will have victory but our victories are in him and not of our own doing verse number seven all the people saw this that is Zacchaeus coming down and muttered see because Jesus said out loud with people listening I need to come and stay at your house today and they said the people were muttering and said he has gone to be the guest of a sinner see they all despised the tax collectors and Zacchaeus was in was in charge of them but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, so he didn't respond to the people who were accusing him. He responded to God, Look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. What happened to Zacchaeus when he was down at Jesus' feet? Pen the, the Holy Spirit penetrated and repentance came to him. And as he stood up, now he's up ups and downs of Zacchaeus now he's up and he's confessing in repentance Lord half my possessions to the poor they weren't his possessions it was stuff he stole from the poor people in the first place I'll give it back if I've cheated anybody which he did I'll give it back four times the amount he is experiencing true repentance he stands up we leave him in this up position standing in repentance he has been at the feet of Jesus. He has a changed heart, a new attitude. And he verbalized his repentance. He verbalized it. His confession is complete. 
he will have the blessing of forgiveness forgiveness from God comes his way remembering verse 5 Jesus said I must stay at your house the urgency of salvation is not only for the sinner but also for the Savior I must stay at your house there's urgency from God to the sinner the urgency I must come into your life I must the Holy Spirit says Jesus has to come in he must I must stay at your house urgency I must stay with you you must stay with me that's the urgent and the mutual message I need to stay with you and you need to stay with me that's a mutual message Deuteronomy 31 6 be strong and courageous do not be afraid or terrified because of them for the Lord your God goes with you he will never leave you nor forsake you once you're his he won't leave you we can leave him we can walk away from God the Lord does his part he doesn't leave us we can turn our back on God and leave from him and it is possible to have your name removed from the book of life Exodus 32 33 the Lord replied to Moses whoever has sinned against me I will blot out of my book you see when you receive Christ as Savior they open up a big book in heaven and they write your name down in that book and only those whose names are in the Lamb's book of life will be in heaven but the Lord said to Moses I will blot you out of my book so we got to get saved we got to stay that way and Jesus said in verse 9 to him salvation today salvation has come to this house in other words the house the family the lineage of Zacchaeus because this man too is the son of Abraham for the son of man came to seek and to save the lost Jesus was seeking him Jesus seeks everybody some people turn their back I, I couldn't remember being that way but Jesus is a seeker nothing could keep Zacchaeus from coming to Jesus nothing could keep him see I knew Zacchaeus he was a friend of mine <laughs> we used to go fishing together Zach and me when he was up in the tree I came along I want to see if he's going fishing with me he refused he said I need to stay here because Jesus is coming I'm not going fishing with you no fishing for me today then Zacchaeus' wife came along we called her mama Zacky she said Zach what are you doing in that tree you're making a fool out of yourself in front of our in front of the village in front of our neighbors and our friends you're making a fool out of yourself and he said Jesus is coming I gotta stay here I'm not going with you and she said supper's ready I made your favorite you mean she said that's right goat gizzard stew you mean with the garlic and the onions yeah just the way you like it no I'm not coming down I'm not coming down Jesus is coming he's in that crowd he's coming this way nothing's gonna keep me from seeing Jesus not fishing not goat gizzard stew that's not scriptural <laughs> the sinner who really means business with God isn't gonna let anything stand or get in the way I can remember I was invited to go to a church and I wasn't going to any I, was, I made up my mind when I went in there I was going to do anything that anybody told me to do because I had to get right with God and I, and I knew I wasn't not pride not fear of embarrassment not being too busy if a sinner really wants God that sinner will find him and he will find you and you will come together ups and downs are not only about salvation sometimes we believers need an attitude adjustment <laughs> sometimes we do maybe a lot of times <laughs> we do if you get where you think you're all set 
Well, then you need an attitude adjustment because you have to be willing to let God show you something new. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you have to be willing to let God change you. Sometimes we think, yeah, I've arrived. We get, a, we get a smug attitude. This is the way it's going to be. Well, maybe that's in the way, not the way God wants it to be right then. You need a new attitude. Sometimes. Sometimes we need to see if we're doing everything God wants us to do. The Lord brings new things into our lives. New things. New things. Sometimes we turn away from new things. I like it the way it used to be. We went to, we went to a church. I, I had never sung a note in front of anybody because I can't sing. I can't keep, keep a tune. I don't have any sense of timing. We went to preach in a church. They were looking for a, a home missions pastor. And we went down there. And it was two hours away, so I, 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 I declined. I couldn't do it. But we went down and preached there twice. And they didn't have, they had, a, they had a screen and a projector. Nobody knew how to run the soundboard or, or turn a projector on. They had a piano. Nobody knew how to play it. They had a sound system. He said, you turn that switch and the microphone will be on. And that's all they had. And nobody, so a, a guy came up and was leading a song out of the hymnal. And I listened to that and I thought, you know, if that guy can do it, so can I. I had never been willing even to sing happy birthday in church in front of anybody. So I turned over the page and it was victory in Jesus. And I led the song singing for victory in Jesus. That was a victory in my life because I did something new. Something I refuse to do. Never refuse. Never refuse. I was a refuser. I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. It doesn't mean you're going to do it great, but just do it. God will take care of the rest. Then we went, then we went to pastor, uh, as interim pastors in Tyrone. And I thought, well, if I could do it over there, I can do it. Now, we had an organ player and a piano player and sing, a song leader and stuff. But I would get up and sing a couple choruses and lead the congregation in choruses to start the service. And I told you I can't sing. And I couldn't, in my, I noticed when I'm singing that the people were coming in after me. Because I don't have any sense of timing. So I got my wife to come up and sing close to me so I could time my singing with her. Because she can sing and she has a sense of timing. A few months before that, I would have let embarrassment rule, and I wouldn't have done it. Just do it. The Lord brings new things. I still can't sing, but I'm not afraid anymore. Not afraid. I know I can't sing. I got in a line with the crows instead of the canaries when the Lord passed out the singing voices. The Lord new, brings new ways of doing things into churches. The most dangerous attitude is when we think that we have arrived and we get solidified and we're not going to change. You know, we went to a church, I forget where that was, and one of the guys said to me, well, I like the hymns and I like them singing out of the book. He didn't want to sing off the screen, and he didn't want to sing any contemporary. He just was stuck. You can't get stuck. Don't get stuck. I'm 74 years old. I should get stuck. Does anybody here do? I do we and Shirley are the only ones older than me in here. Oh, you're older than me. Wow. I'm the fourth oldest then. <laughs> Don't get stuck. You know, I'm a fly fisherman and a fly tire. And every year I tie new kinds of flies because they're on YouTube videos. Oh, I got to try that. I got to try that. Instead of just using the old tried and true patterns. Because I'm not stuck. So why should I get stuck in the ways that we do church? Why should I get stuck? Maybe I should put the pulpit in the back. Maybe I should put it in the middle and have, and have church in a circle around me. 
why get stuck in old ways? It doesn't say in the Bible how you're supposed to set up the church. It doesn't say how you're supposed to order a service. But we do get habitual and we get stuck. How, what does that have to do with Zacchaeus? Nothing. Except that he was got co completely out of his comfort zone when he got up in the tree. Comfort zone-itis. So the Lord will bring new things into your life. He'll bring new things into a church if you, if you let him. Zacchaeus underwent a tremendous change. His life would be turned upside down. He was up, he was down, he was up. But his life would be turned upside down. Salvation is like that. Salvation does that. We believers need to welcome change into our lives as long as it's from God. But change isn't a bad thing. Change is a good thing. It used to be that everybody wore neckties and everybody wore dressy clothes in church. Well, sometimes I come with bibs on. Do you care? You shouldn't. <laughs> if you do, you're convicting yourself. <laughs> Of being an unchanging kind of person. Today I got a suit on, no tie. I, I just I'm comfortable in a suit because I grew up in a funeral home. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I've always been comfortable in a suit. We need to be, be willing to, to bring to to let God bring change into our lives, as long as it's from God. It it doesn't matter where you are. You will encounter people who need to experience the change that God can bring into your life. It doesn't matter where you are or who you are. It doesn't matter if they're believers. Believers need change too. I ask, you know, sometimes God has to convict me that I get too settled. But, uh, but I know sometimes I need to change and get a new attitude. Salvation is the biggest attitude adjustment. <laughs> because, because we have a sickness of sin in our life. And at that point, God can say, you know, you need, a, you need to come towards me. Come towards God. And when we say gospel... We sang that song, how lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. I preach a sermon called Lovely Feet because <laughs> I want to have lovely feet. I want to bring good news. The gospel is the good news that Jesus has come, that he has suffered and died to pay the penalty for our sins. And all we have to do is receive him as Savior and to believe that. That's all we have to do. I wonder if you just... I'll close your eyes for a minute and just be introspective. Having shared these morsels from the gospel, I would be remiss in my obligation if I didn't offer a, an opportunity to respond. And to the believers in the house, if you feel like you need to make a change in your life, these can be little changes or big changes, but just do it. But let me share this. You know, the Bible says in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means every person that ever walked on this planet except Jesus himself. That means I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. Everybody. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In Romans 6.23 it says the wages of sin is death. That means that since we are sinners, that we deserve spiritual death, which is eternal separation from God, we wind up in a lake of fire that was created from the devil and his angels. But the second half of that verse, then it says, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So how can it be that I am a sinner and I deserve eternal separation, but I get eternal life instead? How can that be? Well, because of God's great love, because of John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And to you, 
it means that God loved you. You could put your name in there specifically and personally. That God gave his only begotten son. That put your name in there. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. And if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you at this particular moment about that, it's the next thing you wonder. You know, Nicodemus came to Christ at night and he said, How must I, what do I do about eternal life? And Jesus said, you must be born again. He also made the statement, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. So how then? Nicodemus said, can I get back in my mother's womb and be born again? And he said, no, you must be born of the Spirit, of water and of the Spirit. The first time you're born, you're born of water. Now you must be born of the Spirit to have eternal life. And how that happens is John 1, 12, where it says, to as many as received him, even to those that believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God. That becoming is the born again when you believe and receive and ask him to be your savior. And I'm just wondering today if there's anyone that heard this message, that heard these these snippets of truth from God's word that would want to receive Christ as Savior, that would want to have him as Lord and, and Savior and be born again. I just wonder if there's anyone in the house like that this morning. If there is, I'm just going to invite you to come down here because I want to pray a prayer with you. Anyone? Anyone? Don't be embarrassed. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. That won't help. That'll just, that's just, you know, sometimes there's a battle going on. The Holy Spirit's talking into you on one side. And the enemy of your soul is talking to the other side and trying to keep you from coming to Christ as Lord and Savior. Is there anyone in the house today that wants to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior? Anybody at all? Just come. Are there any believers in here? That you want God to do something new in your life today. <laughs> you want to welcome something into your life that you never thought of and never knew could happen. Is there anybody in the house today like that? Just me. <laughs> there comes one. Anybody else? Maybe God's going to do something new and powerful and wonderful that you never thought he could do or would do, even, even though you've been a believer for years and years, there might be something he's willing to do in your life. Maybe he's going to open opportunities for you to, to minister, to share your faith, to bless people.